Hi guys, welcome back to our show vlogs. Uh, it is a time for the season preview uh, in our series. This time it's the turn of UCD. We're joined by UCD fan Declan Hughes to give us his pre-season thoughts. Declan, how are you? Very well, Ashin. Ashin and yourself? Yeah, yeah. Oh, good, 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 good stuff. Yeah, so we get into it. So obviously UCD into the Premier Division again after uh, beating Waterford in, in the playoff in, in Richmond Park towards the end of the last season. So obviously... UCD will be fairly excited. The fan base will be excited coming into the, the 2022 season to be back in the Yeah, in the it's, uh, well, we hope it's going to be a better experience for the club than uh, 2019 was, which was an unmitigated disaster. And uh, it, it got off to a bad start and it went from bad to worse as the season wore on. Um, we lost six players in the transfer window in mid-season, which was uh, appalling. But as most of them hadn't done a tap for UCD in the first place while they were playing for us, um, it, it's questionable as to whether things could have got any worse, uh, uh, you know, because to be honest, a lot of them had been tapped by other clubs and, uh, uh, you know, effectively, like they were on promises they were going to be signed in June, July, and they didn't do anything. They didn't do anything positive for UCD when they played for us uh, in yeah. the first half of the season. And and the way the the way that the things panned out, it, they might have been better off going in the close season, if you follow mm. me. Um, from the point of view of they didn't do enough to to make things any better for UCD. I mean, we had one one period there where in in three matches in the first division in the Premier Division, I should say, we conceded seventeen goals and two and two of them. You know, yeah. so uh, um, as I said, unmitigated disaster. Suffered our worst ever record defeat, ten one. I mean, yeah. we didn't even lose ten one in our debut season. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Uh, so that was that was a, a disaster, but. I'm hoping for better things this time around. We haven't lost that many players. Hmm. The player we lost is a gem, uh, Paul Doyle. Hmm. Um, Dundalk have signed him. He's effectively yeah. the replacement for Chris Shields that they've been looking for for the last while. Oshin, he'll do a similar yeah. job for them. And uh, he certainly was very effective for us. In fact, in that record defeat, uh, he broke his foot after 42 minutes and we were only losing 2-0 and we ended up right. losing 10-1 to Bowes. Right, yeah, so that was... So, a He's a, yeah. he was a defensive okay. midfield player and yeah. like he was I always called him Mr. Polyfiller because he filled in the holes, you know. Very good, right. Yeah, but yeah. That's it. When he went off, the entire team had to be restructured. We'd gone from 352 to 442. Mm -hmm. And despite having four midfielders, got overrun in midfield, and that's kind of where the uh 10 1 came from. Came from. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, obviously you've kept you know the majority of players as you should tend to do coming into a new season. Um, how, how important do you think it is? You know, that they it's to... very important. But I, I'm particularly gratified by the fact that we kept our most experienced student players in the, mm. in the fold. Uh, the likes of Evan Ozam and Mark Dignam have been around for a number of years now, and they've all re-signed for the new season, which is very good news from a UCD point of view. Uh, Liam Kerrigan is committed till the end of the season, guaranteed to stay until the end of the season, which again is brilliant news. He, under 21 international, our other under 21 international uh, graduates this coming summer, and uh, the speculation as to what's going to happen when he when he graduates. But the fact that he's here for the first half of the season uh, is a positive, and also he's probably wants wants to set a target of trying to be the record goal scorer of all time for UCD. And he's not that far off it. That's a uh, Colm Whelan, uh, as the viewers can now see. And uh, I think the, the fact that Colm Whelan, who's also under 21 international, has pledged to stay till the end of his of his studies is is a, a major plus for UCD as well. And again, one of your, we have a couple of your former players. Uh, I know you're a massive Finn Harps fan in Michael Gallagher. Sam Todd was a real, outstanding player for UCD last year at the back. And I think this year Gallagher is really going to establish himself as the right wing back in the team. We'll be playing a 3-5-2 setup. That number two seat, uh, shirt, um, I know we all use squad numbers, but the right wing back position is kind of yeah. seen as a number two in our club. Yeah. Uh, it, it really floated around amongst three or four players, including Michael last year. But I think Michael has the opportunity now to nail down that position yeah. and make it his own this season. Yeah, yeah, I remember them two players. Obviously, Michael had a few, uh, he had limited chances with David Harps, but uh, Sam was Sam's a very, very good player, you know, and yeah, he he, he, done, he done very well. It was falling away at UCD last year, and you know, he had a few few goals. He popped up a few goals and he had a yeah. few match performances. Um, so yeah, obviously, you know, it's it's obviously good to keep the likes of them there. And of course, you have you mentioned Evan O'Sam and Mark Dingham is still there, and Lorcan Healy and, and goals and that. Like you know, it's it's not bad, you know, considering. 
Really well, awesome. Lorcan is an interesting example because Lorcan came into the club uh, from from the underage setup, and uh, at the time, Connor Kearns was the number one, and there was another yeah. another chap as backup. So Lorcan took his chances with the Leinster Senior League club after having played under nineteen, and I think it, was, it stood to him he played in both the Saturday and Sunday divisions of the Leinster Senior League, where UCD have a team in each of yeah. those divisions, and he played in both. And by the time he got into the first team, he had played that step up kind of football right. between under 19 and the first division. And I think it stood to him as a goalkeeper because he came in, he, he'd he had a lot of experience of playing against adult players. And I think that's, yeah. that stood to him. Yeah, no, that's, that's very good. Eh? Fair play to him. So it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. So I'll say UCD brought in a few players, a lot of young players, you know, as the UCD tend to do. So I'll say they brought in well, the, 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 the few lads that have brought in, uh, we signed Kean Moore from last year's Bohemians under 19s. I'm given to understand he's a, a, a very, very good prospect. Thomas yeah. Lonergan has joined us from St. Patrick's Athletic. And again, he's come up through their underage ranks. And Pats have had a very successful uh, 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 spell with underage football. I mean, they were in at least three finals, I think, last year at underage level. And they won one or two of the divisions. Uh, Alex Dunn and Dylan Duffy have joined from Shamrock Rovers underage structure. And again, Shamrock Rovers have been producing great young talent so uh, we've high hopes for them and Alex Nolan has, has has joined us from Shelburne again from their underage setup so while some of them have a handful of first team games none of them really established themselves or nailed down for example they wouldn't be as experienced first team players as say Liam Kerrigan was when he came in from Sligo Rovers or indeed uh, Jack Keeney uh, who's a native of Donegal who also joined us from, from Sligo Rovers they all had would have had more first team experience when they came to UCD than these young lads. But the fact that we have our our uh, our elder lemons, as it were, from last season, mostly the only one we're losing is, is of course, Paul Doyle, uh, is is a, a massive plus. I'll be a big help to these fellas settling in, I think. And some of the guys that are in the squad are survivors from the 2019 Premier Division season and have played a bit of Premier Division football. So hopefully that experience will stand to them going forward and, and we'll have a better experience this time around. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good. Yeah, so uh, yeah, what players that not many people would know are the ones to watch? So obviously, if you mentioned, you've mentioned the likes of the, you know, them three, the Colin Whelan, Jack Heaney, and uh, Liam Kerrigan, and you also mentioned Sam Todd. So who else kind of in the UCD kind of starting lineup that not many would know are the ones to kind of watch in the twenty three. Well, I, I I would advise people to look out for Harvey O'Brien, who'll be playing alongside uh, Sam Todd at the back. Uh, I think. This is a year where he's going to nail down that position as his own. And he showed some great promise last year, weighed in with a couple of goals from set pieces and grew into the position as the season wore on. I think he's going to be uh, uh, somebody to watch going forward. Also in the team, um, we, we are likely to have um, Adam Verdon featuring his brother Sam has a um, bit of yeah. uh, uh, experience. And Adam um, showed a lot of promise when he came into the team last year. So I'd be hopeful that uh, Adam can make a name for himself uh, as an attacking midfielder this coming season. Very good, very good. Yeah, so uh, obviously there's a, a chance, you know, when the, as you mentioned, you know, the, the, the uh, summer transfer window. Uh, would you be confident of keeping the players that are only signed to them, uh, the likes of Colin Whelan, or do you, do you think he will go in... in, in I, I think if we lose Colin Whelan in the summer, we, we we may not lose him to another League of Ireland team. I think the progress that he's made and the number of goals he's been scoring, there's a possibility he could be following the uh, new new opportunities on the continent. Uh, you see the likes of that uh, uh, James Abanqua going to going to Italy, yeah. and um, young Hefferden from Cork City following in his footsteps as well. These are these are opportunities that are presenting themselves. We're going to qual we're going to uh, benefit from the fact that uh, none of these lads, when they go to Italy, will require work permits because they're EU citizens. And yeah. uh, the fact that the paperwork is going to be so much easier, and the fact that the lads that are going from the Premier Division and even the League of Ireland First Division going forward will have experience of playing senior football going over to to uh, Italy, and um, it'll have toughened them up. And I think looking looking at it from the perspective of being fans of the national team. Um, yeah. You know, if we have young defenders going over to learn their trade in Italy, they'll learn how to defend over there, which is <laughs> more than yeah. could be said about them possibly being in the English under twenty three league. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a fair point. So, yeah, that's that's good. Uh, um, yeah, so I'll see UCD. They'll be 
you know, obviously, as you mentioned, in the last time they were in the Premier Division, they, they didn't do too well. Um, but, yeah, to be honest, myself speaking, I would encourage people to go and check them out because they do play a great brand of football. They score plenty of goals. Um, they concede they concede a few goals as well. You can say that, you know, and maybe that might, might be the way in, 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 in the new season. But, no, I would... Speaking, well, well, it's, it's it's something that you have to guard against uh, conceding goals because for every one goal you concede in the first division, you can multiply that by 1.5 for mm-hmm. the Premier. So the number of goals you score has to be increased by 1.5. Now, our chances yeah. of doing that are, are greatly enhanced by the fact that we still have Kerrigan, that we still have um, uh, Colum, uh, Colum Whelan, and that the fact that we still have the attacking midfielders around them that were creating the opportunities for them last season. Mm. And uh, we still have, you know, the likes of uh, Sh- Sean Brennan, for example, uh, came in from Shamrock Rovers. Now, he was inconsistent, but when he was good, he was excellent. And uh, if he can achieve a level of consistency in his play, he could possibly mm. nail down a place as a regular. But when he was on song, he was one of the better players that performed for UCD last oh. year. But being a young player, some weeks he's really good and some weeks you don't notice him. Yeah, very good. Yeah, so obviously you kick off the... The league campaign against Shamrock Rovers in Tala on on Friday Friday week whatever it is so yeah what are your what are you thinking of that there we'll be looking I, I think actually to be honest I think it's probably a good thing to get the away game with Shamrock Rovers out of the way as soon as yeah. possible um we have nightmares of the last time we played in 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 uh, in uh, what you Tala. call it yeah. Tala, Tala. I, yeah. I, I was trying to think of the other name for the stadium but it's it's Tala yeah. Stadium everybody knows it as yeah. that it's in Sean Moore Park that's that was the name I was trying to think of um we lost 7-0 in our last visit to to, to Shamrock Rovers so uh, obviously we will be looking to improve on that greatly um now if history is anything to go by our first season in the league of ireland we went to play shamrock rovers away and we were beaten 7-1 the second season we drew nil all i'd be happy for a repeat of that second season result uh on the yeah. opening day of the season um and I, if you offer me nil all now i'd snap your hand off yeah yeah that's it well obviously you have, you have shamrock rovers and then you you come again I come against us then you know at home and against Shelburne then the following week like so it's not yeah I'm working I'm working on a piece for the for the online program for that at the minute I have to do an interview Mm -hmm. Uh, you're going to get a giggle out of this I'm doing an interview with Dermot Keeley because we're doing the same edition for uh, home to Finn Harps and home to Shelburne and of course he's managed all three clubs so he's the perfect candidate for it (laughs) he's agreed to do an interview with me I'm trying to set it up for Sunday yeah, oh, very good. Yeah, yeah. So obviously you have Harps, and then you have Shelburne and Drogheda, and then Derry. It's not a bad, not a bad start for UCD. Do you think you're confident enough to pick up a few points there? Well, we have to pick up a few points if we're going to stay up. It's it's really that simple. And uh, I'm, I couldn't tell you how many we're going to pick up because I really don't know. I haven't had a chance to see any of the friendlies. We beat Longford two one last week uh, in Belfield. Uh, mm-hmm. We played a couple of games against Shelbourne and they beat us five two in one friendly. And I think they beat us one nil in the second one. Mm-hmm. But it was two radically different teams that both sides yeah. put out. They played two mm-hmm. friendlies against each other on the same day. So again, I'm not sure uh, how strong either team was to, to be frank but we we need to get something out of those games because it's there's nine games in the first cycle of matches and you need to start picking up games by points by game four or otherwise or otherwise you're on the back foot completely yeah. yeah that's it yeah and then just the final question uh where do you think they'll finish obviously you know lots of people just saying oh you see you know first you know back up in the premier they'll finish 10th what do you what do you think yourself i think um if we don't lose like half the team mid season, I think seventh or eighth is a realistic target. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, that's a, that's that's a, that's a good way to look at it. You know, some people may may think that's a bit optimistic, but when you when you see the likes of that, that partnership between you know Kerrigan and and, and obviously Kid Jackie is there, but Whelan as well. You know, that, that's very important to UCD. So yeah, well, be interesting to see how they how they get on. So yeah, no, my thanks anyway for to Declan for coming on. That was that was great stuff. So yeah. Like the video, uh, and if you're not subscribed already, do hit the subscribe button as it helps the, the channel to grow. So, yeah, that's basically it. Th- thanks very much, Declan, for coming on. Thanks a lot, Rashid.